Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And salutations and blessings to you, sincere Akim of the hopeful elect. And pretty much um, in this uh, rendition, I'm going to get into this common phrase that's spoken by Jake in the Christian church. All right, it's a popular phrase that Jake like to say when they come out of that church. And the phrase being, you see it on the screen, is I am saved. All right, you always come across a Jake that might have a zeal and uh, he, he grew up in whatever de denomination of Christianity and he feels that because he has what he would deem a relationship with God that he's automatically saved or a saved individual. But what they don't realize is when they make that statement, they're in error, all right? And the basis of this lesson is dealing with why that statement is a, is a statement of error. One is because if you're saying that you're saved now, you're insinuating that you're of the Lord's chosen. Because in order to be saved, you would have to have been chosen from the foundation of the world. All right. Two, um, a lot of Jakes that make the statement that they're saved, they don't understand you have to be an Israelite in order to be saved. You can't just say you're saved and you don't even know your nationality. You don't even know who the Lord came to, uh, to deliver who he died for on the cross, you can't make that statement. All right? So that's another reason why that statement is in, is in, in error. Three, a lot of Jakes say they're saved because they believe or they confess with their mouth that the Lord is our anointed Savior. So they believe off top that they're saved. Now there is scriptures that support that if you confess with your mouth that he is the anointed savior, you, 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 it, you will reach on the salvation, but it doesn't just stop there because a person can confess with their mouth and change their mind, all right? See, you gotta understand that it's not about just the word of mouth. It's also about your actions. All right. We are we are saved by grace through faith. And faith isn't just with you confessing with your mouth that you believe. All right. Also, Jake believe that they're saved from their sins now realizing that when the lord was on the scene he had the power to retain sins and to remit sins if you're one of those people who the lord didn't impute sin then you could say you're one of those said individuals but you don't know if you're one of those individuals. All right. The individuals who are going to be saved and they're going to be delivered from their sins are the ones that are going to make it out of the destruction when the Lord comes back on judgment day. That's how you're going to know that you're saved. All right. So. You hear a lot of Christians say that they're saved, but they kind of freeze up when you ask them, what are you saved from? What, what are you necessarily saved from? How are you necessarily saved? And 
they'll come with those common phrases that I mentioned. Well, I'm saved because I'm saved by grace. I'm saved from sin. I've already confessed that the Lord is Savior. And they don't even have the name of the Lord. They don't even know that. They don't even know where to begin. All right? But first off, you have to be of the nation of Israel to get salvation. That's one. And to prove, to back that up, let's go to scripture. Um, I'm going I'm to go to one in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament. This is Jeremiah 3 and 23. It says, truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord, Yahweh, our power, is the salvation of Israel. All right? So salvation is for the nation of Israel. And if you don't, if that's not enough to support what's being said, let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Start at 23. This is Acts 13 and 23. It's, uh, I'm going to start at 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed have the Most High, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Yahweh Shai. When John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. All right, this is John the Baptist, right? Men and brethren, Children of the stock of Abraham are the stock, meaning the offspring of Abraham. All right. And the offspring that was counted for the promise was through, through Isaac, which was passed down to Jacob, whose name was changed later to Israel. So this is referring to the Israelites. All right. And children of the stock of Abraham and whosoever among you that is of the stock of Abraham, which is of the children of Israel, to you is the word of, sal of this salvation sent. And that's the point. So a lot of Jake's got to acknowledge that you got to be an Israelite in order for you to even be preached salvation. That's where it starts. You got to hear this word and you got to know that you're an Israelite because salvation is only to the nation of Israel. All right. So I went to the Old Testament and to the New Testament. OK, and there's countless other scriptures. All right. Then you also make the statement. Which also proves that. That statement. I am saved is a statement of error is that you don't even know who uh, you don't even know who, um, what you're saved from what are you saved from are you saved from death are you saying that you can't die are you saved from danger are you saved from spirits attacking you 
through the spiritual demon Satan. This is Jeremiah 8 and 20. The harvest has passed. The summer has ended. And we are not saved. All right. You're not saved. All right. You can you could die any day. Did you endure unto the end? Did you make it through the tribulation? Did you pass the test of your faith during the hour of temptation? If you can't say that, then you were not saved. Let's get what the Lord Yahweh Shai himself said. Let's go to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew. Is Matthew 24. And I'm going to start at 7. And this is what the Lord told his disciples regarding the last days or the tribulation prior to his second coming. Now, a lot of this happened during the time of um, 70 AD, you know, after the Lord died and resurrected and descended into the heavens. But it was going to happen broadly in the latter day before his second coming. So these words that he spoke to the disciples apply to this very day. All right. This is uh, Matthew 24 and 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and diverse places. And we're living in that time now. And it's going to escalate. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. It's going to get real bad out here, man. And that's how you're going to know we're in a time of trouble. All right? When there's a famine, starvation, people eating, uh, uh, eating just basically anything they see in their presence because of their body being weak from the lack of nutrients, all right? Diseases, disease warfare, or which is the pestilences, you got to make it through all that before you can say you're saved. We ain't made it through all this yet, all right? We're, we're basically in the beginning of these said perils that are beginning to unfold or unravel on this planet earth all right and it, he goes on to warn you all these are the beginning of sorrows then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and that's talking about the hour of temptation it's going to be a point in time where they're going to wage war on people that believe, uh, so-called believers who actually believe on this, on this word, that believe on the Messiah. And they're going to come down upon you. According to Project Megiddo, if you even believe in the Bible, you're on that hit list. So they're going to try to deliver you up to be afflicted. Okay? This so-called white man, which is the devil, he's going to come down on you having great wrath. And you're going to have tribulation. There where your test, your faith be tested. If you're able to make it through that, then there shall be known who the Lord's chosen is, man. But we haven't entered into that stage yet. 
All right. It says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. How, how, do, you, how do you know you claiming to be saved? How do you not know that whoever it, wh whoever, whomever it is that you learn your teachings of who you call Christ from is not a false prophet? Because a prophet is going to be warning you about the tribulation that's going to be for you in these latter days. They're going to be warning you about the mark of the beast. They're going to be pro actually prophesying to you. They're going to be letting you know that who the world only calls Jesus Christ is coming back to destroy. All right. They're going to be they're going to be letting you know that, hey. America is going to be destroyed. If your pastor ain't telling you that, then you're learning from a false prophet. And if you're seeking after a false prophet, there's no deliverance in following after a false prophet. You're going to die the death of a, of a man who's a sinner. You're going to be condemned. All right. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now. What, what, what is the end? Let's jump down to um, verse 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory so this is telling you when the salvation when the salvation is going to occur from my knowledge according to scripture according to the word of the most high none of this has occurred yet all right the son of man hasn't appeared with his chariots who what the white man calls the ufo which those are the clouds in heaven that the scripture is talking about it's not talking about literal fluffy white clouds in the sky that you see every day. It's talking about the ships. All right. That event has not occurred yet. When you see movies like World of Worlds, Independence Day, that's an idea. We have not witnessed that yet. And that's going to be after the tribulation. Jacob's trouble. So, just off of this alone, it's an error to make the statement that you're already saved. All right? So, let me finish reading. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect is chosen from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right? That's when you're going to be saved. In this same event that 
our Lord Yahweh Shai was speaking of is also recorded in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, starting at the sixteenth verse. This is First Thessalonians four and sixteen. It says, For the Lord himself shall ascend descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the most high, and the dead in Yahawashai, or who you call Christ, the Hamashiach, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be ever, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the salvation. Okay, that's the salvation. Um. Revelation 11, and 12. This is Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell, and in an earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. So, this is John the uh, the Revelator, or Apostle John, speaking of the vision of the sal this uh, event of salvation, and it links up with what. Our Lord Yahweh Shai spoke to the disciples when he was on the scene. All right. So basically, when you're on that chariot, after all the pestilence, the race wars, World War III, the Battle of Armageddon, all right, the, the, the famine, when all these things take place and you're saved from the lake of fire, which is going to be America, when 200 million missiles detonate on America, that's when you can say that you're of the elect and you're saved. Until then, none of us know who's saved. Okay? None of us knows who's delivered. And that's why we're striving and hoping that we're of the hopeful elect. That's why we give diligence to give the calling of our election sure. All right? That's why we constantly have faith, which faith is only a gift of the Most High because not all men have faith. And you can say you have faith, but if, you, if you're not doing what the word says, then your faith is empty. It's vain. And a lot of Christians, a lot of them say that they're saved and don't even have faith. All right? So, um, Basically, um, the idea is in order for you to be saved, you got to be saved from the coming perils and evils that are going to take place. You got to be saved from your enemies, which are the heathen nations, the people that are not Israelites. All right. We got to be saved from the so-called white man. Who's going to actually try to persecute you for believing on the Lord and, and his word. All right. You got to make it past. The hour of temptation. Okay? You don't know if your lot is to be thrown into 
the prison camps. You don't know if you might have to take on the role of uh, being a martyr for Yahweh Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. All right, you might have to be beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. All right. So as of now, no one's saved. But through by the uh, before the foundation of the world, it was already uh, elected who will be saved. We just don't know who. But an indication of those who are given diligence or who may um, fit the bill of an individual who may possibly be saved are the men of the Lord who are teaching his word in sincerity and in truth and out there uh, uh, pushing his word out on the highways and hedges hearkening unto the commands of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. They're going to be keeping the commandment, the law, statutes, commandments to the best of their ability. They're also going to have the spirit of humility. They're going to understand that they're not perfect and that they need a deliverer. All right? And we do need a savior, man. Because we're in this flesh, man. And we're prone to sin. That's why we pray that we uh, that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, the Most High, in the name of His Son, have mercy on us through grace, because it is Him that has the power to pardon transgression. Blessed is He in whom the Most High and part of not sin. Okay? Whose transgression is covered. That's what you got to pray for, man. And not be lifted up with pride and just know that you're going to be saved or you're already saved. All right? I'm going to leave off with one more scripture, and this is in the book of James, first chapter. Now, this is James chapter 1 and 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, do you receive salvation just by hearing the word? You hear your, your pastor or your preacher or whoever you listen to teach the word to you and then you close the book and that's it, you're saved? No. Because it goes on to say, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. All right? So with that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, and my honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone. And hopefully this lesson was edifying to, to sincere Akim and even uh, the sincere Akwaf. All right. The men and the women that, that, that are new in the faith, that are seeking salvation, that are seeking to be edified. Hopefully this was edifying, you know. Um, Basically, um, you know, just pray, be humble, and hope that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai have mercy on you and your family, and that you'll be delivered and saved from the destruction that the Lord is going to bring. All right. Ultimately, being saved is the Lord having mercy on you in the day of judgment, and delivering you from the lake of fire, man, which is America being destroyed by thermonuclear missiles and also 
the fire that's going to be coming from the Lord himself and the angels from the clouds or the chariots. All right. You don't want to be on the opposing side and you're getting burned with that fire, man, because that's the second death. Blessed is he who do not have who do not partake in the second death. All right. So with that, I'm going to close out and I'm going to say Shalom.